So when doing Civil War research, is it possible to know exactly what type and breed and gender of horse that a specific individually named soldier or trooper rode during the American Civil War? I have to say I'm super excited to bring this video to you because this is one of the examples of why I love primary research. Uh, I was going on the research arsenal looking up the 6th Virginia Cavalry and lo and behold there's a ledger that was transcribed not too long ago just added to the database uh, that literally lists every single individual by name in Company G of the 6th Virginia Cavalry and not only that but specifically what color and type of horse that they rode in addition to whether they were a mare, a stud, or a gilding. And so for me as a hobby historian, I love coming across these records because when you're trying to put a name and a story uh, and, and kind of a tangible history to our ancestors or to the individuals that we're researching that, that fought in the American Civil War, we want to get the, just the finite, the minute details, the minutia of their life of the war. And this newly transcribed ledger was no disappointment at all. I spent hours last night going through this ledger. There's so much to talk about. I mean, they actually talk about uh, exactly what weapon, what type of weapon, uh, and, and by name, like actually by name, which soldiers actually were issued the weapons, how many rounds of ammunition per pistol, per carbine, or shotgun, for instance, how many caps. I mean, they go down to the specificity of how many caps were issued to each trooper. But while there's so many things I want to talk about, uh, today we're going to focus on the actual uh, unique descriptions of the horses that those troopers rode. As you can see here, the ledger actually lists uh, the individuals of Company G of the 6th Virginia Cavalry, individuals like J.O. Lancaster, S.P. Bagel, uh, Vogman, Gillian, Simmons, uh, Eccles, Florin, Hubbard, Reuter, um, I'm probably just demolishing these names, uh, but they have the entire list of Company G, in addition to some actually some other companies as well. Uh, and what's interesting is they actually list the color uh, and the, or the, the gender of the horse. Now what makes this even more uniquely valuable is there's an ongoing debate on exactly what colors were common, what colors were not common, uh, especially in the Confederate Cavalry. Obviously the Federal Cavalry had, at least ideally, had very specific uh, criteria on selecting cavalry horses, certain age, uh, certain gender, ideally a certain color actually, or at least avoiding a specific color. Um, but it's stereotypically or traditionally uh, rebel cavalry actually was kind of understood as kind of free for all whatever the guys could have and that lends itself while that is true that it was a lot more lax uh, even on the federal side it was a lot more lax especially mid to late war I hesitate in just saying it was a free for all from the confederate standpoint it, it makes it easy to go off into uh, accepting things that may not have been true, accepting rumors that may not have been true. And this ledger actually, uh, at least for the 6th Virginia Cavalry, Company G, uh, specifies exactly the colors that they had. So let's dive in and see what they had. So as you can see here, we broke down that list of this ledger that we're scrolling through into basically the, the three primary colors. So about 23% were sorrel, about 30% were gray, and 23% were bay. So again, sorrel, gray, and bay were the three primary colors, with black being just close behind there at 13%. And beyond that, you had dun horses that constituted about 3% of that company, white horses about 3%, and again, roan horses, which was interesting to actually read as, as a roan horse, uh, being authentic or being uh, you know mentioned in the ledgers of the 6th Virginia Cavalry. Now combine that with the gender of the horses they also listed, right? So out of all the horses listed, they specified whether they were mare, studs, and everything else they listed as a horse. So they would say gray mare, uh, black stud, or sorrel horse. And so I, I have to be upfront and honest with you guys, I'm assuming, a uh, little kind of read me between the lines here, if it just said horse, I'm assuming that was a gilding of some sort uh, because they specified mare, they specified studs, and pretty much everything else would probably be a gilding. Uh, but the percentages break down as follows. So about 43% of that unit were mares, which then left 56% as gildings or just horses, uh, and they had about 3% were studs. Now here's what's interesting about the studs listed, is they were not necessarily just officers. 
Uh, so I, I'm just trying to imagine, you know, a private riding around. Granted, on the Confederate side of things, uh, they were ideally their own horses familiar to them, uh, but just, you know, the vision of just some random private riding around on a stud uh, is, is kind of an interesting uh, take. I just, mentally, I, uh, you know, it's unique. I, it's just not something you automatically think about when you think of a private in a Confederate cavalry riding in formation with a stud. So taking all this into consideration, basically, I'm, I'm kind of rounding here, about half were mares and about half were gildings with, again, 3% being studs. So what does this mean? Honestly, not a whole lot. I mean, obviously nothing here is earth shattering, uh, but it, what it does, it opens up and uh, lends itself to a deeper appreciation, a more clear understanding uh, of what these soldiers had. And uh, this is, again, this is the material culture. This is what the research arsenal focuses on. Uh, we let Ancestry and Fold 3 focus on who and let the research arsenal tell you how. And this is a great example of the material culture that we focus on. Whether it's how many caps you're, I mean, by individual, it literally lists by name uh, each individual on the roster and how many weapons they had, what they were issued, how many rounds they had, how many caps they were issued, and more specifically, the exact same gender and color of horse they were riding. Please, if you haven't already, become a member of the, of the Research Arsenal. Uh, if nothing else, if you want to support us, become a member, get access to hundreds of thousands of records. Uh, if, if you want to, to research and, and understand a deeper appreciation uh, of your ancestor who fought in the American Civil War, if you want to find records that, uh, again, that Honestly, Ancestry and Fold 3, they, they don't focus on, because they focus on names, we have documents, that, uh, or more specifically, morning reports that don't have a single name, uh, but you know they just have tick marks and hash marks on them, or ledgers like this that have been in basements for decades, uh, and due to the, uh, the owner's understanding, our mission statement, our value, we wanna bring and preserve and digitize these Civil War documents, not only for future generations, but for a clear understanding of research. I mean, there's things that we're already discovering uh, that are actually, have already contradicted some of the well-known books on some of these regiments out there, all because of some random document housed in a uh, private collection that these private individuals are allowing us to digitize uh, and, and upload and, and transcribe for your research purposes. So again, please support us. Become a member of the researcharsenal.com. And until we see you next time, happy searching.